this if we want to do these service projects and there was three different levels levels one two and three and they said um, they're all like different uh, involvement levels or whatever and um, the first one is like four weeks second one is longer and the third one's longer um, but there are these cool things and they asked us just to like step out on faith with these service projects and to see like um, it's for you to like serve other people and it was really cool because um, we split them into three groups who want to do one who want to do two who want to do three and um, so we're really looking forward to them. Um, the first one is where there's this thing in Haiti where Rebecca was talking about where they have like the third level is making these dirt cookies. And the dirt cookies, you know, like she was saying, represent like what these kids in Haiti have. Is that tape on your shirt? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, these dirt cookies represent like what these kids in Haiti actually have to eat to survive because their hunger pains are so bad. Um, so they just eat anything to fill them. And so level one is showing a video about that. So we're going to have a movie screen back here on here on these screens and all. And it's going to be really fun. So we're going to invite a lot of people out. And level two is where we're going to choose a neighborhood. And we're going to choose the area around here. And we're just going to pray for them. And we're going to have like, these, we're going these cool things that they want us to do. They want us to go door to door and like knock, but we don't. Everyone's like, no, 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 I don't want to go do that. But so we're doing like, we're being creative. And we're going to do all this cool stuff. So if you want to be involved with any of those, stay after today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I hope you guys come. So Thursday night, I'm sitting in the movies, just watched the first two Batman movies, which were great, and we're about to watch the third one, and I'm sitting there with 26 of my friends. It was really great, a lot of you guys are here, he's at the tape from her shirt. <laughs> They're all supposed to wear stripes, and she forgot, so they just taped her stripes, which I thought was great. Okay, so I'm sitting there with 26 of my friends, a lot of you guys were there, and right before the movie's about to start, I'm just thinking like how much fun this has been. Like, I'm really enjoying the summer. It's been a lot of, a lot of fun. The night before, we were at Summer X Groups, and 40-plus kids came, um, showed up. It was just fun being around each other, just talking and enjoying each other's company, uh, eating ice cream and brownies, and uh, playing Cranium, which we found out as a big group is really surprisingly unfun. But now we know. You know so <laughs> Next week, we're doing Wonder Wars. It'll be great. Um, and then last Sunday, how fun it was to host the It's So Late, It's Early show with a bunch of friends up here just sharing about camp and what camp meant to them and how it like, changed them um, and all the commitments that they made. And there's like, worship time that was just like new for a lot of people. Um, not to mention camp itself. It was just a week of hanging out and uh, worship and being around God-centered people. And I just enjoyed so much of last week. It was just a great, great time. So I'm sitting in the movie theaters thinking about this. And then go home, I think I got home at like 4.30 in the morning or something. But then I wake up from a text from my brother at 6.15 on Friday. And it says 60 people in Colorado were shot in the movie theater seeing the, the Batman premiere. Uh, 12 of them were killed, many of them which were kids. And my very first thought was, wow, like, that could have been us. That was exactly us the night before. Like, that could have easily been us. And like, what was it that made some nut, coward, 24-year-old get for some reason, open fire in Colorado and not in New Jersey. Like, why wasn't that us? Like, why wasn't that our theater, you know? And I had to admit that I had a selfish thought immediately, just happy that it wasn't us. Just remember thanking God, Lord. Like, that was my first prayer, Lord. Thank you that that wasn't us. Um, but really, what stopped that from being us? Was there anything? Was it, like, divine protection? Was it luck? Like, I don't, I don't know really what it was. It was just, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure. But, so I started thinking, like, what can we do? What, what, I feel because I feel like we could do something, I feel like we should do something, but I don't know what that is. Um, so I've been thinking about that and praying about that. So if you guys have ideas, something you would like to do, um, we have something where people might get together next Thursday night and just have a prayer service, like at midnight when it, when it happened. Um, so that's one option that we might be doing. But I know one thing that we all can do is pray, and this is like a, a serious deal, like people um, were died because of this. So I just want to encourage you guys to pray because prayer works. Like there's evidence over and over and over that prayer works, so I just want to um, continually encourage you guys to pray for the families and for the injured and for those who lost people. So I'm going to pray for us right now for that. Um, so if you pray with me. Lord, thank you for this day. And uh, we just want to pray for the people out in Colorado, Lord, for the families that lost loved ones um, and for everything that they're going through right now. Be with those families um, as they're dealing with that. Be with the family of the, the shooter that uh, they have some understanding and uh, just be with that family as they go through all kind of stuff right now, Lord. And uh, just be with Colorado in general as they keep going through all this stuff uh, with the fires and um, just be with them and be with us and thank you for everything you're doing. You know and pray. Amen. Amen. So, this has been on my heart so I want to share that first. Um, so, we're on this new series called Wanted. And uh, do we have that? 
Can we just enjoy this for a moment? I really like this. Um, Sorry for body rocking. <laughs> so I asked, I asked Anna, ours, uh, right there, Anna. See, there's Anna. She's awesome. She makes our slides and she's great. She's so creative. But I asked her to make it. She's like, can I be fun or silly with it? I was like, I'll go silly. And then I just laughed and laughed at this. 347 for reward. That's not even respectable. <laughs> but I like approach with caution. Looking into eyes may cause permanent shuffling. <laughs> so try not to look directly. Right, anyway, so I think this is perfect timing for this series called Wanted. Um, because we all go through life with these wants. And we all go through life with these desires that we just instinctually have. And we didn't have to, we didn't have to be taught how to want. We were just born. And when we were little, all we cared about were those things that would like, keep us alive, like food and napping and whatever. Um, because that's what satisfied us as babies and then as little kids. But um, then we grow up, we start finding more and more things that satisfy us. And we find that those things are actually what drive us. Um, but we don't say it like that. We don't say it's like the things that drive us. Where we say things like, um, what do I want to eat today? Or what do I want to wear today? Or who do I want to hang out with today? Or what do I want people to think of me today? That's how we think of it. And we're driven by these desires. Many of which are good, but of course many are just, well, not so great. And um, we even know sometimes that they're not great, but we figure, you know, I like doing them because they make me happy and who's going to tell me what to do, you know? Um, so I find that people are going to do exactly what they want to do. It's just how we're wired. Um, they'll, they're going to do things that satisfy them. You guys are just going to do things that satisfy you. And people get confused and think that wanting things and having desires contradicts what God wants. Because you're thinking, well, I want to do all these like, earthly pleasure type things and we're not supposed to do these things as Christians, you know? Um, because we think that if we call ourselves Christians, there's all these things that we can't do. And has anyone else ever thought of that before? Um, that Christianity is a bunch of like lists of sh like shouldn'ts or don'ts. Like I know I certainly have. When I was younger, I was saying, well, I can't do any of these like fun things because I call myself a Christian and I'm not supposed to do those things. Um, I want to tell you that anyone that says that, that uh, having desires in your life or having wants in your life is a bad thing, is 100% wrong. That's, that's not what the Bible says. It's not that way. See, it's okay to want things, and we're all driven by our wants in this world. Everything we do... Um, is because we want to. We eat and we sleep and we do things because it's fun. We want to eat, we want to sleep, we want to have fun. Um, the mistake that a lot of people make is thinking that, that your wants are going to satisfy you. That they're going to just leave you feeling completely full. Um, is it okay to want something? Yes. Yes, it is. God wants, us to have, God wants us to have goals. He wants us to make plans and be determined. But is it okay to think that those things are going to satisfy you long term? No. I think... I can argue that in the Bible. So you're going to be led by what satisfies you. It's just human nature. Um, so it's about finding out, that what finding out what satisfies you more than anything. And I'm not talking about those simple pleasures in life, because those things aren't lasting. Um, the happiness that we get from worldly things, things from, like, uh, from food or from dating, all that kind of stuff, is temporary. And the Bible says that that stuff, well, that, the Bible says that, that stuff will satisfy you, but only for a season. Like, it's not going to endure. So take relationships, for example. Does God want us to be in a relationship with people? Yes, he does. Relationships are great because we're not meant to be alone. We're not meant to go through this life alone, which is why we've been so big here in small groups and X groups and one-on-one -on -one time. It's because everyone here craves relationships, right? Like, you just want to be around people with friends and with the opposite sex. It's just how we're wired. So... There are a few things more annoying than when I hear people say that it's wrong to want to date or wrong to want to marry someone, because it's not. The Bible says, the Bible wants us to have those things. Now, God doesn't want us to be an idiot about it either, though. He doesn't want us, like, if you're dating, just out, like, looking for a good time or just to hook up, like, that's something that I don't think God is too pleased with. I think that's pretty clear and easy in the Bible. Because the Bible says sexual immorality is wrong. If you have sex outside marriage, is wrong. First Corinthians says that, along with other books in the Bible. So don't hear me say dating school and twist it to like meet your own agenda because you're just out having fun. Uh, what the world's messed up is when we try to fill those empty spots in our life with a person. It doesn't just have to be the opposite sex. It can be a person like your parent or your best friend or, or something like that. Uh, because those people are never supposed to fill that spot in your life in the first place. Have you ever heard people say that they feel empty inside before? Like they go through life and like, there's something missing. It's just something I feel is empty. Um, because the more that you go after things that you desire, 
And the things that you desire are pretty obvious. I think they're pretty universal. Things like uh, being cool, guys or girls that you want to hang out with, uh, working out, looking good. Um, all that does is make you want more. It just builds that appetite more and more and more. Like, you ever see people that will just work out so much and then they look like amazing, but they're like, no, my legs are big or whatever, and they just keep working out more and more. Um, because the appetite grows and it just doesn't satisfy you. There's a king in the, king in the Bible in Ecclesiastes. It was King David's son. Um, and he spent his whole life looking to fulfill his worldly pleasures. Um, he did the, the finest foods, riches, beautiful women, all sorts of things. And in the end, it was interesting because in the end, in Ecclesiastes, it says, all that is like chasing the wind. Nothing will fill you except God. Nothing, uh, nothing except following after God and chasing after wisdom. Those are the things that last. Following after God, chasing after wisdom. Not any like the, the worldly, earthly things. So often, not always, but often, when people say that they feel empty, it's because God is missing in their lives. And there's a, there's a God-sized hole in each one of us, a guy named Pascal said. And then when I was doing research, um, this one reporter tried to give Shia LaBeouf the credit for saying that. Like, he was the first person ever to say that there's a God-sized hole. I'm like, come on, Google. But, um, so Pascal said there's a God-sized hole in all of us. And when we try to fill that thing with anything but God, that hole is never going to be filled. And when people don't know like, what to fill it with, they try so hard to just fill it with anything. They try to fill it with exercise, they try to fill it with love or money, or like all these other things. Uh, because they're just hoping to cover that void up in their lives. I've heard many stories this past week, um, and not all about like, what's going on in like, people's lives that I've been hanging out with, or people's lives that are in here. And some of them I overheard, some people told me, and some were just people called me because they were concerned. Um, and it's about people um, trying to fill up their lives with things that aren't of God. And I don't want to look up because I don't want to like, make eye contact with the people that I'm thinking about. But it's about people like, trying to fill up things with their lives that aren't of God. And things that like, you think are just fun or you think um, will like, or make you cool or whatever. But those things, they simply just don't satisfy you. Because those things were never meant to satisfy you. Like, people will try and fill their lives with things, but with things that were trying to, like, make you happy, but those things were never intended. God didn't put those on earth to make you, like, for lasting joy. You know, maybe for, like, temporary, but nothing for, like, uh, lasting. So you guys know we got, just got back from camp and we had a good blast. But you know what the problem with camp is? Is that it's an emotional high. I don't think anyone that went would argue that. It's just, like, an emotional high. It's easy to feel on fire for God when you're surrounded by like 400 people singing, praising the Lord, and you're like squished up on stage, and like the band's going up there, like, and there's like you're, you're pushed up, and the guy, the, the main singer's like, "Oh Lord, we're here for you," and everyone has their hands raised. It's easy to feel on fire for God then, because like who doesn't? I mean, I'm an emotional person. I get dry, driven by that stuff. I think it's like one of my character flaws. I just I, I get driven by like emotions around me. I like it. But then we all come home, right? And we aren't around that emotional spike any longer. And we're back at home, we're around our non-Christian friends, or, or worse, we're around our friends that claim to be Christians, but you can't tell it by anything in their life. Like, and then you think, like, well, how am I supposed to act? Like, I'm not around these people anymore. What do, I, what do I do? And it's hard to be that light in the dark again. Matthew 5 says that we're supposed to be light in the dark. You know? And it's really tough when you're trying to be that, but there's no other lights around you. You're like that, that one single light in a dark room. Or when you're in light around other lights, that's even harder sometimes. Like when you're around a lot of other Christians and they're claiming to be Christians or like, so they're acting one way but then they say one thing but then they're acting another way and you're starting to like take a stand because people are clearly doing something wrong. Um, but Matthew 5 is an encouragement that we're supposed to be the light in the dark. And it's not easy and it doesn't say that it's supposed to be easy. Um, but it's hard to be that sometimes. Popularity, money, chasing after guys or girls, um, getting good grades, um, being around people, emotional highs, all those things are good, all of them. But there's a place in our lives for each of those things, and there's a place for God in our lives. And those people are never supposed to fill the God-sized hole in us. See, what happens when we try to fill with things that aren't God? I'll tell you what happens. Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Like when you try and force something in there, and you're not going to feel satisfied because nothing is being satisfied, right? So sometimes it may seem like there's this emptiness, um, it may seem like the emptiness is filled for a while, but it's just a temporary cover. <coughs> it's like eating just candy or drinking soda. Like, that's it. That, like, that's your whole diet. You're going to feel full, 
But after too many, of de uh, too many days of that in a row, like after a long period of time, your body will grow weak and it can literally die because you're putting, stuff in its in, you're putting stuff in your body that was never intended to keep it alive, right? This stuff may taste good or it may like be fun to eat, um, but it is never intended to keep you alive. John 4, 13 through 14 says, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water I give him will, be, will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So think about, think about the most important people in your lives. Take your top like 12 people, for example. And your whole life, all that mattered to you were those people. That's where you got your self-esteem, it's where you got your self-identity, um, it's where you got your confidence, um, and that's where you got your joy, just everything. That's where you got it from these 12 people, right? Now what happened if you're sitting in a Colorado movie theater and those 12 people are just gone instantly? Like, how do you, how do you pick yourself up? Like, what do you have to lean on? What do you have that just, like, keeps you going? I think it's really, really tough to think about. My family is extremely close. You guys know my sister, Kara. What if Kara found her identity completely in what me, my brother, and my parents thought of her? And then when something terrible happens, car accident, you're sitting in a movie theater in Colorado, and like, you're gone in just one night. Like, what would she do? Like, that it's like your whole life just kind of comes to like this crashing halt, if that's where you find your identity. And it stinks losing people, don't like, get me wrong, that's a horrible pain that we all, well, it's a reality of life. Um, but, if you have God in your life to fill that hole, to fill the hole that like, God is supposed to fill, when life punches you in the gut, like you have something to absorb that blow. That's how I like to think of it. If you have God in your life and he's filling that hole, when you get hit by life, and you will, everyone will get hit um, like, by life. It just kind of happens. It just kind of happens. But God's going to soften that blow. If not, that punch is going to go right through you and could even kill you. And maybe not physically kill you, but mentally or emotionally or spiritually, that could just put an end to you. Because life is going to come, and it, life doesn't play favorites. There's nothing that separates us from the Colorado people from us besides distance. Like, we're no different, you know? So that could have easily been anyone. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.23 says, You say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say, am I, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. See, it's cool to want. It's cool to have desires. That's okay, we all want. We'll never stop wanting things. Even God wants. And he'll never stop wanting, really, either. But you know what he wants? Like, he wants us. You can put yourself in this wanted poster. Maybe every day you'll be shuffling. <laughs> but you're on God's most wanted list. And I think that's cool imagery. I mean, I just made it up, so it's not like a real thing. But I like the way like it thinks, like, you're on God's most wanted list. And... Um, Seriously, believe me, I'm not up here before you guys like saying, like, I have this all figured out. Like, I wish I could be like, hey, I got this down, let me guide you, here we go. Um, nope, I struggle through this all the time. And even if you don't realize it, you are going through stuff like this every single day. Because our days are driven by our desires. See, God also wants us to want Him. He, puts, he put the desire of want in us. And he did it because while we're chasing worldly pleasures and all these temporary things, we will eventually realize what we're doing. That these things aren't going to satisfy us in any like, lasting way. And that we need to turn to God to be fulfilled. See, your boyfriend or girlfriend, they will give you the invitation to be happy. The image on the computer screen will even give you the invitation to be satisfied. But following Christ at its core, in its heart, is the ultimate invitation to come and be satisfied. See, listen, this is it, and then I'm done. And I say that because I found that, like, when you say this is it, and then I'm done, people tend to tend to perk up. So this is the last thing, and then I'm done. Then we're wrapped up. Listen to me. Christianity is not an invitation to be good. It is not an invitation to stop something. It's not an invitation to be a better person. It's not an invitation to start reading the Bible. It's not even an invitation to commit to something. What it is, and don't overthink this, so listen to me, don't overthink this. What it is, it is an invitation for those whose souls long and thirst to be full. And it begins with desire. Christianity is a relationship that speaks to the true desires of our heart. A relationship with God, at its core, is about coming to be satisfied in a way that nothing else in your life could ever satisfy. So go back to John, 13, John 4, 13-14. 
Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. And put in there whatever it is for you instead of water. Whether it's working out, whether it's looking good, whether it's being cool, whether it's success or sports, whatever. Because um, it, it's, it's different for everybody. Whoever drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So, let me close this out. Lord, thank you for what you've been teaching us in our lives. Some good and some bad, but Lord, thank you for what we're going through. Um, so it can point us to you, Lord. And it says in your word that you'll never put us through anything um, that we can't handle. So we thank you for that. Lord, thank you for what you're doing in Elevate. Lord, please, please keep the devil out of this place. Um, keep him out of these kids' lives. Because we know that whenever you're up to doing big things, that your enemy is going to come and get in the way and mess things up. Lord, so please keep us safe and keep us looking towards you. Thank you. Love you guys.